Okay, so for those that obviously don't know me, uh, my name is Dan, I'm uh, Gracie's gym manager down here in San Diego, California, um, and the media manager for the US Open, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Christy Hawkins. Um, hey Christy, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Um, so yeah, we're very excited, obviously you're competing in the US Open, that's coming up in April. Um, I've definitely seen a lot of your videos on Instagram and preparation for it, so that's very exciting. Um, what I wanted to talk about first of all is you didn't start in powerlifting, correct? You started with bodybuilding? Yeah, um, I've only been doing powerlifting for about two years, but I've been, I was a competitive bodybuilder before um, star lifting weights when I was like 16, 17. Uh, competed in bodybuilding for um, a little over 10 years and kind of finished around 2010. I did turn pro, competed in the IFBB, um, was lucky enough to stand on the Olympia stage, the Miss International stage. Um, but right now where the sport is at, um, it's moving more towards physique and, and things like that. Um, and so there just wasn't much left for me to do in the sport. There weren't many pro shows and things, uh, of that sort. So, uh, just kept training and was, you know, not really competing in anything for a while, did some CrossFit and then kind of stumbled into powerlifting and decided that I liked that a lot better. Um, and have been doing that competitively for about two years now. Awesome. That's super cool. You had some great results, I'd seen in bodybuilding as well. Like you said, you made it to a decent level, very decent level. Um, you competed in Olympia. Um, mm -hmm. You were first in 2007, I think, in the NPC. Yeah, so to win your pro card, you have to, at the time, it's they give a lot more pro cards out now, but um, at the time, you had to win your class um, and or the overall at a national level show, and so I did that in 2007. Um, I won the NPC National Championship, the light heavyweight and overall. Awesome. That's super cool. And specific to bodybuilding, like which of those shows is like you most proud of? Oh, definitely the nationals. It was really uh, fun for me. I did that show for three years trying to turn pro. Um, but the year I won was in Dallas and my whole family was there because I'm originally from Texas. So it was just really special for me. So you said you're originally from Texas. Talk to us a bit about that because I saw that you, you're obviously very well educated. You've gone through, well, I'll let you explain it with your education and your upbringing and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I'm originally from Texas. My whole family is there. I grew up in a small town called Longview. Uh, went to undergrad at Texas A&M University, studied chemical engineering. Um, decided I didn't really want to take a traditional job in like the oil and gas industry, so I ended up going to grad school. Um, and so I did my PhD at Caltech, and so it was then about 2003 that um, I moved out to California did my PhD, then took a job, um, which was also in chemical engineering, then took a job in the San Francisco Bay Area um, doing synthetic biology, genetic engineering of yeast, uh, which is what my thesis is really focused on. Um, and I've been out here working for about eight years now. Awesome. And I saw you'd started your own company uh, in that field as well. Yeah. Um, so I worked at two other companies, um, kind of still smallish startup types. Um, and then a couple years ago was approached to work on basically my graduate thesis project again. Um, it got to the point where it was time to uh, transition from academia to industry and really start a company and try to commercialize the technology. Um, and what we're doing is we're doing genetic engineering of yeast to make opioids um, and other types of compounds for pharmaceutical use. It's a particular class called benzyl isoquinoline alkaloids. Um, but obviously things like morphine and codeine are the ones people are most familiar with. Um, and this is a project, again, that I started um, a long time ago <laughs> back at Caltech. Um, so it's been in the works for over 10 years. Um, and finally, the technology is at a point where we can really start manufacturing drugs using this technology and get away from uh, plant-based sourcing of a lot of these materials. It's really fun. Um, it's also you know, this is like my baby. Um, this is something that, a project that I started, um, and to be able to come back and work on it and also just be a co-founder of the company and chief technology officer um, is really exciting. We're gonna obviously talk a bit more uh, in depth about powerlifting in a moment, but with regards to bodybuilding and powerlifting, um, how, do you, how do you balance that, that level of academia and now obviously that level of um, work in the industry with you know, a professional career in both of those sports? Yeah. I mean, I've been really lucky that um, a lot of my jobs, especially now, um, it's been pretty flexible. And so I work hard. I work 
kind of long hours, but also really odd hours. <laughs> uh, kind of depends on when my yeast strains are ready and things like that. Um, so I'm always able to, to fit in training, and I found that's something that's really important to keep me balanced. You know, when you get frustrated in the lab, it's great to take a break and go to the gym. Um, you know, and when you're frustrated in the gym, you can focus on work. So um, it's really been a good balance for me. Um, yeah, and I've managed to, to juggle both, I think, pretty successfully. Awesome. And specific more to powerlifting than anything else, what lessons have you, have you taken from powerlifting that you can apply to everyday life and work life? Well, definitely the bodybuilding taught me a lot about discipline um, and, and consistency. And I think, you know, powerlifting too, it's the same, you know, I, I learned this from science as well. Um, you know, you're going to have a lot of hardships and difficulties and you just kind of have to push through. And sometimes it feels like you're beating your head against the wall. Um, definitely that's true with, with lifting, but if you just keep showing up every day, um, you know, hopefully you'll get that, that PR or that breakthrough. So consistency is key. Yeah. Awesome. That's really cool. So yeah, getting into powerlifting, which is obviously what we want to talk all about. Um, as you said, you, you started that a few years ago, um, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be obvious to someone else watching because your numbers are, are hugely successful. Talk us through kind of your best lift in each one and your best total. Um, so I have, I currently hold the world record, all time world record in the squat deadlift and total. Um, so the squat, um, I broke in that record, I think four times. So increased the world record from 205 kilos to now 225 kilos. Um, and the deadlift, um, that's my current record is 244 kilos. Um, hope to improve that a little bit more. I kind of had some hamstring issues the past couple meets where I felt like the strength was there, but it just didn't, didn't happen for me that day. Um, and my current best bench press in competition is 145 kilos, um, it's two and a half kilos off the world record. So, uh, my best total is, I think it's, 1328 pounds. So I think it's 602.5 kilos, something like that. Um, so I'm hoping to really improve on all those numbers in April. Um, especially all my squats have been done in sleeves. So, um, I'm trying to learn how to squat with wraps. You know, I'm hoping I can get another, you know, 20, 25 kilos out of that. So, um, you're coming up in April then with the, the three, as you said, the three lifts and you want to improve the squat. I would imagine the bench would be a big one for you as well, because then you could say you hold the world record on all three. Yeah. Your training now is going into focusing on that two and a half kilo, this, this, the difference. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I attempted the, the world record in November at Record Breakers. I just knew it wasn't there that day. Um, I'm really excited. I'm working with uh, Dan Green, and so he's really got me focused on improving my lockout strength. And so I'm hoping that, you know, adding some different exercises and, and things like that. Cause I've been training the same way and just running a linear progression for, you know, the whole time for about two years. And so, um, it's nice to kind of mix up the exercises. I'm hoping that'll, you know, give me a little bit more, uh, so I can, uh, break that record as well. What does a week look like in training for you? Like squat once or twice a week or like kind of give us an idea of what your training looks like at the moment. Uh, yeah. So as I mentioned, now I'm working with Dan, so it's, uh, changing it up a little bit. So um, I'm benching on Sundays. That's a heavy bench day. Monday is a heavy squat day with wraps. Uh, Tuesday is more uh, shoulders, bench, tricep accessories. Wednesday is front squats and some back accessory work. Uh, Thursday's off. Uh, Friday deadlifts. So uh, really just, you know, and throughout my time training, I've really just had one really heavy squat day and usually one or two other kind of accessory days, uh, either more bodybuilding style or more volume for, for squats, like high bar, um, things like that mostly. Awesome, so you're getting plenty of variation there as well, kind of working out those weaknesses. Yeah, um, you know, and coming from a bodybuilding background, you know, I know more than just three different exercises, and so um, I like to train a lot of different ways and kind of build my volume that way instead of just Oh, I need more legs, you know, I need to squat more frequently, you know, I can do hack squats and lunges and, and a lot of different, different stuff to kind of build uh, certain muscle groups. Awesome. So very smart, smart training, which we wouldn't expect anything less with your academic background as well. That's really cool. Um, what would you say is your proudest powerlifting achievement today? Obviously, you mentioned, you know, which is your strongest in the world records, but which one means the most to you? Definitely the first time I broke the squat world record. Um, you know, I'd had my eye on it for a while and, you know, finally being able to get that, um, you know, and my coach Max Ada was, uh, was coaching me at the time. He's been my first and, uh, you know, 
really only powerlifting coach until recently. And so, um, it meant a lot, you know, cause we were working for that for a long time and having my teammates there and, and just the support, you know, it was a really great moment. So bring the, the focus onto the U S open specifically, uh, what are the expectations you have of yourself for that meet? Obviously we talked about the bench, but what about in total? Yeah. Um, so kind of one number I'm thinking, you know, in terms of being competitive at that meet, I think it's going to take like a 600 wilts. So, you know, so that's my goal for me. That probably looks like a, I mean, I don't want to throw numbers out there. Um, but you know, in, in my head, I'm certainly thinking around a 250 squat with wraps, you know, 150 bench, 250 deadlift. So, um, you know, real, like it's going to have to be a really good day, <laughs> um, to get close to that. But you know, those, those are my aspirations anyway. That's great. Yeah. One of the, the things I'm kind of um, well, personally interested in also delving into with, with all the athletes that we speak to is how, how someone defines their success and setting yeah. goals in, in terms of, um, you know, setting optimistic goals, but at the same time being realistic, you know? Yeah, you have to be realistic because like I said, it has to be a good day. And, you know, I've gone into meets, you know, I had one where uh, my squat was below my best, you know, and I was really disappointed, but then I came back and broke the deadlift world record. So, you know, sometimes it's just all about building a, a good total um, you know, and trying to choose smart numbers, be smart about it, you know, don't, um, you know, make sure that you get a solid total and just try to slowly build on that. Um, you know, especially at this level, it's like, you can't have all the world records all the time. Um, you know, yeah, you're just talking about, um, just crazy amounts of weight. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can't expect to, to come in when you're at this level and like every meet have a, you know, 20 kilo total PR, you know, it may be two and a half kilos, but Hey, that's a win. So I'm sensing that your, your focus is on being consistent throughout and, and not trying to go crazy in one area, just keeping all this, the plate spinning as such. Um, and just do little by little and over time, the results speak for themselves. Is that fair? Yeah. I mean, I think that's true. I think it's true. You know, and what I do with strain engineering, it's like, you love the big wins. You love it when you build a strain and it's 10 times better than, than the best one that you had. But sometimes just incrementally making improvements over time will get you to your goal or your milestone. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely the, the same in powerlifting. Everybody would love to, you know, hit a huge PR at every meet, but, but sometimes just kind of consistently building your total is, um, you know, in over two years, you know, I put like 300 pounds on my total. So, um, so yeah, those improvements add up. Fantastic. Um, who are you kind of most looking forward to meeting male or female at the U S open and competing alongside? Oh, I think I've competed with everybody already. You know, I always really admire and respect Susan Salazar. Um, you know, I love seeing the guys too, like Yuri Belkin. I love watching him lift. Um, and a lot of my friends from the gym, you know, Andrew Herbert and Emily Hughes. So, um, it's going to be fun. Yeah, sure will. Every weight class is stacked for both the female yeah. and the male. It's, it's crazy, the lifters that we have there. Um, which do you think is going to be, or which weight class uh, do you think will see the most records broken? Or, you know, what will be the big takeaway from the meet? You know, I got to say, like, the for the men, like, the, the 220s and the 242s, um, I think those are really competitive right now. For the women, it's hard. I think there's there's women in almost every weight class competing that are capable of, of breaking some records. Um so yeah, I think, yeah, hopefully my weight class in the 165s as well as the 181s, Susan Salazar, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. For sure. It really is anyone's on the day, obviously, it's, it's going to you know, yeah. depend on who turns up on the day, but as you say, there's, there's super stacked, especially amongst the, you know, some of the women's, women's classes, as you say, the 165s, and then, um, yeah, I think you're right, the 220s and 242 for the guys, Yuri Belkin, Andrew Herbert, Larry Williams, and then obviously you sit here at the 275s and Milana chair, but it would be, be really cool to see those records yeah. broken. Yeah, to see the, just the amount of weight those heavyweights move is is phenomenal. I think unless you're actually into powerlifting and you've you've you know lifted some weight before, then you really yeah. appreciate what it means to have a thousand pound on your back. Yeah, it's hard to appreciate because you know I find most people that I talk to, you know, if I say I squat 500 pounds, it might as well be 200. You know, because they can't conceptualize like how heavy that is. You know, anything over a couple hundred pounds is like, oh, that's really heavy. Um, but if you've actually lifted, you know, 500 or 600, then a thousand is just it seems crazy. So, yeah. For sure. Awesome. Um, did you want to give a shout out to any sponsors uh, you know, supporting you? And... Uh, no, I don't really have any sponsors. I'm pretty low key. Uh, you know, I have like 100 followers on Instagram. So, um, 
actually give a shout to He Man My Pug's Instagram. Go follow him, He Man the Pug. <laughs> cool, good stuff. Um, all right, superb. Thanks for talking to us today, Christy. Um, yeah, really, thank really you. looking forward to seeing your, your training come together and wishing you all the best for April. Uh, we look forward yeah, to nice seeing to meet you, you putting up some big numbers. Thank you. Thank you.